welcome back to the special audience edition of Hannity. Now, we have highlighted throughout the program the Journal News invasion of privacy of the rights of gun owners who have now been outed and the left's attempt to limit the Second Amendment. But my next guest has an entirely different opinion and is defending the Journal News. He's saying it was protected by the First Amendment. And I do give him a lot of credit, by the way, because I don't think our audience really is going to like him. But joining us right now is criminal defense attorney, former New Jersey uh, prosecutor Jeff Gold. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for being uh -huh. here. Uh, I want to play a 911 tape. A woman in Georgia just happened a little over a week ago. She has twin nine-year-olds. Somebody, guy breaks in with a crowbar. She goes into the crawl space of the house, hides, quiet. Husband, 911 on the line. Very chilling moment. Listen to this. Is he in the house, Melinda? Are you sure? How do you know? You can hear him in the house. Melinda, if he opens that door, you shoot. You shoot him, you understand? Just remember everything that I showed you, everything that I taught you, all right? Melinda, I'm on the phone with 911. They're, they're dispatched right now. She shot him. She's shooting him. She's shooting him. She's shooting him. She's shooting him. Okay. Shoot him again. Shoot him. Oh, no. I remember, he has nine-year-old nine twins. She's protected. She's in the crawl space. Broke into the house. Was that a good thing? She had a weapon in that house? Sure. It was a good thing. Sure, it was a good thing. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, look, I, look, Sean, I want, when I have a gun, I want a sign on the outside of my house that says, I've got a gun. Stay away. So there's a different way to look at it. Sometimes... Wait, wait, wait. wait. You do. Do all of you want a sign on the front of your house? Oh, what about the well, it's it a, is a it, choice. You're right. But they You're had no right. choice. They were outed. They have no, these people have no choice, and they feel that their lives are in greater danger now because now criminals know they have guns, and they also know where the, the, the people live that don't have guns. Right, but the, you know, but the Journal News did a service. Now these legislators who are here in the audience, they're going to make sure that this law, this Open Public Records Act, has an exception for guns. So they've done a good service. I'm not saying which is right and which is wrong, but the, the sunshine of this law is a good thing. Now we know there's a problem with it. They'll fix it. All right, so, well, then you're not really defending it. I am defend I'm defending, defending the it? First Amendment. Well, I'm, I'm defending, defending the fact that they outed these not, people The First now. Amendment is not absolute. Can I go into a crowded theater and yell fire? But the Second Amendment I isn't absolutely question. Either. Can I go into a... No, absolutely not. I cannot go into... Absolutely So there not. are... So wait, do we... Forget about even the legality of it. You know, if you work in the news business, it, was that the morally right decision by this newspaper to, to out these people and tell the criminals who has guns and who doesn't? Well, you're assuming that the newspaper business is a moral one. It, it, it may not be. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is that they have the right to do what they did. Will some good come out of it? I think good will come out of it. And the Second Amendment is not Tell absolute the either. Do you think good is coming out of this? No. I don't think. These are the people that are living it, so they don't believe you. So it's easy for you to say because you weren't one of them. But I think, I think they'll find out that good will come of it after this. Oh, that thank you for lecturing them. Not lecturing. I think that they'll find that out. That's not, that's not me saying it. Family is at risk right now, and that's wrong. His family's at risk is what he said. So I can take care of myself. Look, there's two sides to that, too. Every time you turn on the TV, well, you see our babies are dying. two sides if you're carrying dying. a gun. I, I can't turn on the TV without seeing another shooting, another mass shooting. So you know what? There's two you sides to it. Legal citizens. Wait, it's not us doing that. Put, uh, I put understand that. that. I agree again, with sir? you. That's not us doing those mass shootings, So sir. you attack the legal citizens. No, no. I'm just saying they had a right to publish it and that some good will come out it's of it. It's irresponsible. They good? didn't have to publish it. Just because they had the right did not mean that they had to publish right, it. But, That's but right. you know, you know, the government knows. The government knows all of this. Um, every one of you. The like question we need to ask is, what yes. was the intent of this? And the intent of this, of whether or not you realize this, you are a bully and you are a pawn in the liberal media complex. Yeah. Okay. Bonus five. Yes, sir. In the back, in the third row. Uh, Sean, my name is Pat Storino. I'm a uh, retired police officer and past president of the Westchester County Detectives Association and a member of the Affiliated Police Association in New York, an FBI in New York State uh, certified police firearms instructor, and spent 23 years uh, in law enforcement on the city, federal, and county level. And I can tell you that there's case law that came out in uh, December of 2011. Judge Solomon in the New York 
uh, Supreme Court, New York County, ruled in the New York Times versus the NYPD in an Article 78 FOIL action that active and retired law enforcement officers, not just NYPD, and active and retired government uh, employees must be redacted from the list that the uh, NYPD turned over to the New York Times in their FOIL action. That speaks volume towards case law and may work towards the pending legislation in the Assembly and Senate, mm -hmm. which in its justification clearly says that the exposure of this information does the record holder, their families, and the public at large a great disservice and puts let me, them at risk. Let me, let, let me dovetail off this, because this, great point. Yeah, you can clap them. That's, that's fine. Um, you know, you're a lawyer. You argue for a living. You're obviously very good at what your, your job. You've been doing it for a long time. Sometimes things come down to just the right thing to do. Now, if I think with all the, the crime that we have in society and people that do not have weapons in their home, they now will be targeted by criminals. That will probably happen as a result of this. People that have guns, they might be targeted so somebody can go in and steal guns. Police officers that arrested people might now be in jeopardy. If they're retired, they are on the list, some of them. And I just, you know, I listen to your arguments. You think you're sophisticated. And I'm thinking, where is your moral compass that you don't see that's wrong? No, I, it's not a question of a moral compass. You have a First Amendment for a reason. It's the First Amendment. You're and giving it's, me it's a technical the, answer. Not technical. It's first for a reason. You know, do you think... And this is second you, for a reason. Look, but, that doesn't, but I'm asking you right or wrong. The newspaper did not have to do this. And these people, and I argue, and people that don't have guns are in jeopardy. Why can't you see the outrage in that? Because I don't think they're in as much jeopardy as you say. Nice of you to just sit... Oh. Last week there was a news conference in Rockland County where the local sheriff said his officers in the correctional facility are being uh, approached by the incarcerated people and saying, I know your address. Now let me tell you, that's a heck of a scary that, thing. That, that's a very scary thing. That's a good point. I'll, I'll let you respond to that. That's the real world. It's not just some abstract disagreement, argument that you're making in law school. These are real people, real lives, real families, real children that live in these homes. Mm -hmm. well, that's, what's, that's what is in, okay. in, in play here. Okay, but, but this has always been the case. In other words, anybody could have done this just because they did it now and, and have the bright light on it means that it can be fixed, but it could have been done before. It, this isn't something the damage has been done. You, can't, can't you wouldn't the know that unless somebody did it. Now they've done it, now well, we can address it. Why do I think it. you'd feel differently if it was your family? Somebody puts your name, your uh, I tell you, I want a sign on my house that says I have a gun. You want a sign. Stay away. Then you put your sign up and leave these people alone. How's that? Well. All right. Yeah. All right. And coming up next, well, you just heard the other side of the argument. So what does our audience think? Does the First Amendment argument supersede their right to privacy just because, well, it may be legal? Does it make it morally right? We're going to go back to our studio audience. They will respond to this next straight ahead.